This video is brought to you by our patrons. Thank you to those who support Florb on Patreon. And if you are interested in supporting Florb, click the link in the description and join the community over on Patreon. Now, enjoy today's episode. Hi, I'm Michael. I'm Stephanie. This is Jasmine. And that's our Vandora. We were both working in Halifax, Nova Scotia. We really wanted to start traveling. We wanted to do world travel. We kind of caught wind of the van thing, looked into it. We were looking into sprinters for a while because I really wanted to be able to stand up. Um, but all the sprinter vans were just way out of our budget and then they all needed like so much work, the ones that we could afford. We looked for like a couple months. It was really actually kind of hard to find a van. The second we'd find a van, I would call them and the van's gone. And this one we kind of just, we found it on Kijiji. Within five minutes after he posted, I called the guy. I was like, we will take this van. He was four hours away, so we made the trip up there on the weekend. He actually held it for us. He got it safety for us. And I just love the character of it. The van itself cost $2,900. paid about $1,100 in repairs. And the build was actually really cheap. I used some scrap wood from work, and we just got cheap material. It was like maybe $2,000. So total, I'd say, what, like $6,000 for the entire setup. The GMC Vandura 1988. It's got a Chevy V8 350 engine, which apparently is good. <laughs> Not good on gas. We haven't really done much with the outside of the van. It was in pretty good shape. I fixed up some like rust holes on the bottom, but we basically built over these two windows here, and we just put blackout tint on it so you couldn't see through and covered it with Reflectix. We wanted our bed to be high enough to store enough stuff under it, so the mattress is sitting pretty flush to here. On the other side, we actually built over the entire window. Our heads kind of sleep at this end, so we don't want people creeping in our window. It's just a dark tint, reflectix, and wood. And we built over this one as well, mostly because we needed our sink a certain height so it's usable. We can't open these windows now, but it works. I actually tied a rope into the, uh, the handle on the inside. There's no handle on the inside of the door. No, pull up on the door and open it, just so we can get out from the inside. But this is basically like the trunk of the van, I guess. And we just put this curtain on to make it look a little prettier. But yeah, it's just tools, stuff for body work. We've been working on the body of the van, skateboard, an extra water jug, and our chair. We got our max air fan up top and 100 watt solar panel. And we came in the side with the wire and it runs right through here. And it all runs into here. It's just the Renogi Wander PWM solar charger. It's not the best one, but it does the trick. Chargers are a 70 amp hour battery, so it's not very big. I think you're only supposed to use like half of that, so we really only get 35. But with that solar panel, we've never had a dead battery, and we run our fan off of it, our lights, and we have a little cigarette outlet here to run, charge everything off of. We haven't got an inverter yet, but we'll get that soon. They're like 12 volt lights, but they had an adapter hardwired into it, so you could use it in a house. I was like, I could just cut the adapter off, and hardwire it right in, and it works. We just went with like the rigid foam insulation and then we just filled all the cracks with spray foam. So if you actually look in there you can see our insulation. I basically didn't do anything lower than this. There's insulation but there's no plywood, there's no paneling. It just saved weight and time and if something goes along with the wires or we want to add more wires, it just makes it more accessible I guess. The fiberglass roof I actually used Reflectix in some spots just to create almost like a vapor barrier. It keeps the condensation down. We tried to find the lightest material we could for the build. So I used pretty thin plywood, I think like an eighth of an inch thick. It kind of bends with the curve of the van too because it's so thin, so it made it just like this really smooth transition everywhere. The floor is laminate flooring. It was just easy to snap it together. It's just, it's there by gravity and everything else sitting on it is holding it in place. But we've had no issues with it. This whole cabinet is made out of just plywood. The countertop's like a pine piece of wood from Home Depot. It cost like $30, weighed like 20 pounds. But we just sanded it down, stained it, it turned out pretty good. So this is our sink, and we have a whale um, boat foot pump. Usually we just sit down and kind of pump it, and then have water. Before we used to have a small little gold faucet when you pumped it, the water poured out like right here, so it was really hard to do dishes. 
So we just upgraded to like a bigger faucet. And then eventually I think we're gonna get rid of the foot pump and get like an automatic pump. We built this before we got all the water jugs and stuff. So we couldn't fit two of these ones. So unfortunately like our gray water is a gas tank, but it works. And then just kind of cleaning stuff and stuff like that's under there. And then here we have our cook stove underneath here. Put it on top, set up our propane, and then that's how we cook. Um, and then just kind of like our everyday things that we use up here, some dog treats. Um, we just kind of have all of our pots and pans, our coffee press, some tea and coffee, stuff like that under there. And then here is just like all of our food storage. So we just have them in like Tupperware bins so they're easy to get out everything that we need. And then like our cooking spices and stuff are just in that bin there. We just have a cooler instead of a fridge. We might eventually upgrade to a fridge, but the cooler's been working pretty good for us so far. It's just like a Coleman rain cooler. And then we just put little hooks on the ground here so that when, again, when we're driving, it doesn't go everywhere. Um, but we've never had an issue with it. This is our Max Air fan. He has 10 different speeds, I believe. Works amazing, especially if you crack one of these back windows, you get such a nice draft in there from it. And we also have a skylight. Um, we had two more up at the front, but we had to cover them. Um, yeah, so that's pretty awesome. And we can like lay in bed at night and like look at the stars or like even just the sky at night. And if you're laying in bed and like the sun's beaming in, it's fantastic. It's one of our favorite parts for sure. This is all our toiletry stuff. We have like our toothbrush, shampoo, conditioner, all that good stuff in there. And then on this side, some of our electronics, all of Jasmine's toys and water and food and treats. We also custom did Jasmine's little hook. So we did like a silhouette of her and then cut it out and put her thing so we can hang her leash and harness. And those are all of our clothes here. We just have it latched so that way when we're driving it doesn't fly open. The legs can come out under the bed. So we just have like our winter clothes and bins there, some extra of Jasmine's things. And we also did like a tiny little bit of storage up here um, just for like our arts and crafts stuff. Trying to get into macrame, still very beginning stages. And then Michael's sketchbook and pencils and stuff are up there. Um, yeah, and then these are all like original. I decided to keep them just because they're so handy because they just go up and down and they fit the window perfectly. We have our Reflectix here, so we just pop those in the windows like that at night or like I said, to keep the heat out in the summer when it gets really hot. And when we were living in the winter, it helped us keep the heat in. Blackout curtain that we hook on these little hooks at night. And then we have privacy at night so no one can see in and it's blackout so they don't see the light coming through sit out here, have our morning coffee. And we have little storage here, which was originally for like our mugs and stuff, but we just put like cool rocks and stuff that we've collected on the way. And then that's Jasmine's bed. It's her own little spot there, but half the time she hops up on the passenger seat with me. So yeah. With the build, we kind of just took it day by day. Even the color of the stain, we didn't choose that till the day we pretty much stained it. Whatever works, works, and that's what we'll do. You can stress and like try to perfectly plan it out, but I mean, a lot of things, it's just like small little things that you can kind of fix as you go. A lot of stuff you think that'll be important when you're building the van, and then after you're living in it, you're like, I stressed about that way too much. Yeah. Like, it's not a big deal. You don't even notice. You'll end up doing that a lot, I feel like. Building it, you have no idea what you really need. You just know what you see, and you're like, I want that. And then when you're living in it, you're like, that's not practical. <laughs> so you're constantly upgrading it. Keep it simple too, I guess. You kind of have to like realize what you can afford and like how important is it to you? Like is standing up really important or like going and traveling and doing what you really want to do more important? Most of the time you want to spend outside of the van. Like, you know, we could have this big elaborate like sprinter van that's like all out, which would be nice, but doing yeah. it's more important to us than having like a super elaborate There's, build. Like some people spend a lot of money on their vans. Yeah. I mean, just a mattress will do because it's still the same experience in the end. Yeah. 